Hi, I'm Patty Suarez with Senior Connection Center, a nonprofit organization that serves as the local area agency on aging for Hillsborough, Manatee, Polk, Highlands, and Hardy counties. If you're watching this, I'm going to assume you care about the health and well being of seniors and their caregivers in our community. Well, if you have an interest and a passion for helping us fulfill our mission to help older adults and persons with disabilities live with independence and dignity, and you live in our five county service area, how about getting involved as a member of our board of directors? Serving on our board can be a rewarding experience as you're about to hear from some of our current board members. But first, I wanna tell you a little bit more about Senior Connection Center. We run many programs that serve seniors, persons with disabilities, and caregivers, including our Elder Helpline, the local SHINE program, health and wellness classes, and elder abuse prevention training. And we are the access point to the Medicaid Managed Care Long-Term Care Service Delivery System. In addition to providing these services, Senior Connection Center is a funding organization we are responsible for seeing that more than $23 million of primarily state and federal funds are spent wisely and fairly throughout our five county service area. So we can be available to help any of the more than 600,000 seniors who live here. Senior Connection Center's board members help us manage those dollars and assist us with various fundraising activities, which allow us to provide additional services to local seniors and their caregivers. To learn more about serving on Senior Connection Center's Board of Directors, please take a few minutes to hear what some of our current members have to say about their experiences serving on our board. And now I'd like to introduce some of our board members who can share their insights on what it means to serve on Senior Connection Center's Board of Directors. First, we have Jalinda Jones. Jalinda is one of our newest board members. Georgiana Goodson, who is our vice chair, and last, but certainly not least, Becky McIntyre. Becky is our board chair. And Becky, I'd like for you to maybe talk to our audience about uh, why you decided to join Senior Connection Center's Board of Directors. Certainly, thank you, Patty, for this opportunity. It's been a great joy and um, honor, actually, to be on this board. And when I was first approached, um, I started thinking about the reasons that I have been really drawn towards the elderly and disabled. And honestly, it started as a little girl. I always wanted to be around the older folks and I love to hear their stories. I love to talk to them. Um, and then that just continued on as I became a nurse. Um, I just fell in love with people. As a home care nurse, I got to know them in their home situations and not every situation was good. And I saw the patients that really needed an advocate and they needed education. They had no idea that the, the resources that were out there. And then also I do have a disabled sister-in-law who's uh, profoundly disabled. And so I know that some of the ups and downs we've had as a family trying to care for her um, really put this passion into my heart. So that just kind of is the background that I have as to why I was really excited to be invited to be a board member. And, and hope to serve our community well. And I think you touch on an important point in that, you know, the caring for older adults and disabled adults, as you said, it's really an important uh, factor when making a decision to get on board with Senior Connection Center. Uh, how about you, Georgiana? How did you decide to get involved? Uh, thank you, Patty. I've been thinking about that. Uh, well, about seven years ago, I was brand new into senior living and assisted living facility and learning kind of the ins and outs about uh, the steps that seniors and their families need to navigate when all of a sudden it's time for a new living situation or increased care needs. And uh, one thing I found um, is families didn't know what resources were available to them. I learned about the Medicaid long-term managed care program because of course that was going to assist seniors with being able to move into assisted living, which Medicare doesn't cover. I didn't understand how they could apply. Uh, and then there seemed to be all these private organizations out there that could help. But then I learned about the Senior Connection Center and it's like the light went off. So ever since then, uh, 
well, I've been a fan of the Senior Connection Center for sure, because this is how a family or a senior in need can go directly to one number for all the resources they need, including that really necessary long-term managed care, um, assistance with getting their, um, making sure that they have the best um, Medicare plan. And this is exactly what I needed to know to be able to help people who were, you know, had come to me for, for help. So I was able to pass it on. Then I was curious, you know, well, where is this place, the Senior Connection Center? And I learned that it's physically located in Tampa, that the information and referral um, agents are extremely well-trained and extremely knowledgeable. And it just was a wow for me. So I give out and, and restock Senior Connection brochures all over <laughs> in, in our market. Uh, then I learned about an open board opportunity and I thought, wow. So who knew that there was so much involved behind the scenes just to make sure that this has happened, that everything unfolds with integrity and um, oversight that's necessary from, from the board. So it's a pleasure not only to meet the new colleagues that I have from being a board member, um, but also to expand my knowledge and be able to serve and give back. Great, great, thanks. And Jalinda, you're one of our newest board members. Uh, welcome aboard. And um, how about you? What, what inspired you? Well, I was actually inspired by the legacy. My father started his insurance agency and has been a board member for a prominent amount of years. And so for myself, I was coming in and seeing that we've already started that journey of helping educate our community on advanced planning. And so just the Senior Connection Center goes hand in hand in providing resources to the community that we're already working with. And so when it comes to adding value, it is something that we've been able to partner with the Senior Connection Center and help with. And I love that, that you guys bring so much value to the senior community because they need to know about these resources, but that exposure has to be there. So we've been able to partner and just continue to bring more exposure to the senior community um, by working with you all. And I just love that. Okay, great. Um, Becky, if I can come back to you. Uh, you had an idea of what we do and you're involved with seniors in your work, but is there anything after serving on the board that maybe surprised you about Senior Connection Center that you didn't know we did? Oh my, yes. Where do I start? Um, I, I'm known to say that you all are the best kept secret the Senior Connection Center is. Even though I had been immersed in healthcare for many years and thought that I had a pretty good um, idea of the different resources that were out there, I was pleasantly surprised as a board member to learn about all the programs that are available. Um, I certainly knew of some things like the home delivered meals and some of the care in the home, but there are many other programs, whether it's assisting veterans, um, whether it's working, uh, like Georgiana said, with the long-term care, um, and then also health and wellness um, classes. So also trying to help prevent people from um, becoming ill and getting chronic illnesses. So living the best that we can for as long as we can and, and to be as in independent as we, we also can be at the same time. So those were all things that surprised me and I continue to um, praise and, and say the name of Senior Connection Center wherever I go because I think other folks also do not know of the depth of the services you provide. Yeah, and we're, we're trying really hard to not be a well-kept secret, but I think it's one of those things where people, once they need us and they start uh, researching, yes. once they come to us, they have found a home and a place where they can get the resources that they need and, or at least identify them. So, No, uh, abs absolutely. And your team, uh, the, the team there at Senior Connection Center does, uh, does a great job of community education and taking that word out. But I think you hit it on the head, Patty. It's until you need those services, that's when you start really listening and paying attention and um, you become the mouthpiece also then for your friends and neighbors. Yeah. Georgiana, if you were to describe some of the qualities we're looking for in board members, what would you say, you know, how would you describe that the next potential board member? What should that person be like? What should their skills and assets and such be? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, I would not say that you need to feel qualified because I certainly didn't feel qualified. And if I had to guess, Jalinda probably feels inadequate, overwhelmed. But what surprised me is the depth and the professionalism of the training that we received as new board members right alongside, you know, with our, our new mem board member orientation was 
very it was comprehensive. Then we've we've had board retreats where we all work alongside each other. So if you like working in a group to collaborate and understand what the needs are, um, also I think there's just a diligent oversight of really common sense decisions, but they require board approval. So um, it's important that you're committed to being at the meetings, being at the meetings on time. Um, that's you know a bit of a time commitment, um, but but so worth it because then you can see um, I don't know you can see these dollars that are that are out there and available be put you know to proper use. Um, you don't have to have a financial degree to be on the finance committee. You know you don't have to uh, be an elder law attorney to understand. Um, the distribution of the money. I think just um, you care for seniors. You're committed to um, the, you know, being actually being diligent, you know, paying attention to when an email comes through that it's a meeting for you. Um, and that, you know, you're wanting to just expand and, and meet new people who are like-minded to help seniors get the care that they need. Yeah, I think that passion for seniors and for helping others is... Yeah is certainly one of the requirements but like you said all that other background experience we have a diverse board so we're not looking for somebody who has just just healthcare experience or just financial experience or just legal experience we we, we have a diverse board and we're looking for diversity among our members mm -hmm. um jalinda is there anything you'd like to accomplish as a new board member anything you'd like to any kind of impact you'd like to have in particular Yes, I think the biggest impact that um, something Becky brought up earlier was just the exposure. I think that many people need to know about what the Senior Connection Center provides because there's just so many resources there. Like something I learned when I newly joined was about the mini grants that not only are you all impacting the community through your resources, but you also provide mini grants for other organizations that are doing the same service to seniors. And I thought that was phenomenal, but more people need to know about that. So for me, it's just about being another person that can speak to the great value that you guys provide to the Central Florida community. Great, thank you. Becky, anything that you can think of that you'd like to tell a potential board member to, to consider? I wanted to just to kind of highlight one of the comments that you made, Patty, about diversity. Um, and I know that a, a lot of times, whatever field we're in, our profession, many times the committees, the boards that we serve on are with like-minded people. And so one of the things that I've really enjoyed about the board is to work alongside people with different backgrounds. So diversity of educations, a diversities of culture and learning about um, the way that they approach may be a little bit different than I have. And so I think that's a great way to keep us sharp and to make some of the best decisions that we can as a board. Um, we're certainly looking for people who have the passion, like you said, Patty, to be with us on the board, um, that um, have a heart for the elderly and the disabled and um, want to continue the voice and, and to be their voice and to advocate for them. Also to look, um, like Jalinda said, new programs, so constantly looking for new revenue streams or new ways to serve our population as we change. Um, for example, some of the classes you all typically have taught in the past were in person, but now based on uh, the COVID um, pandemic, you've moved to uh, virtual um, teaching and education. So you had to be very flexible and, and change very quickly. And so I think as a board, we need to have that same mindset, being able to think of different ways to serve our communities um, because it is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Georgiana, anything you want to add to that? Um, no, I don't think so, except I've got the brochure. <laughs> I keep this with me all the time uh, because, um, like you said, it's so important to get the word out about the Senior Connection Center. So that, that number, 1-800-96-ELDER, and mm -hmm. having this resource in hand to be able to point people in need. I think that, in a sense, we're all advocates for seniors. If you're watching this video today, you're you know, you have a heart for seniors. So take a look at the Senior Connection Center on Facebook, online is what I would encourage. And then just consider, just look in your heart and think, is this a, an area that um, I should serve? Okay, great. Right. Um, Jalinda, any closing comments you wanna make? Um, I just love that we can provide the value that we do. And if anyone sees that they would like to provide value to the senior community in the same way, I would encourage them to apply and join. 
Great, thank you. And, and we want to remind folks too, we serve a five county area, Hillsborough, Manatee, Polk, Highlands, and Hardy counties. Uh, when we, we were talking about diversity and we're looking for diversity in board members and that, as Becky said, is professional diversity, cultural, ethnic diversity, racial diversity, gender diversity, and also diversity among those five counties. So we really want to make sure that we have representation from all those counties at all times because the needs are so different. Uh, and Becky, maybe you can speak a little bit to the fact that, um, you know, you live in a, a fairly rural community. Um, and then we've got board members who are in Tampa, for instance. Uh, how can you see Senior Connection Center impacting some of the rural communities? I have seen the um, outcomes, if you will, or the benefits of the Senior Connection Center in our rural areas and have seen the, the seniors that have benefited from that. Um, it's a little bit different the way that the delivery of services are. Obviously, we're not as compact as you are in um, some of the other metropolitan areas, but nonetheless, the needs are the same and sometimes even more because we have fewer services that are available. And so we do need board members um, from um, these areas, the rural areas, um, to be the voice and to share uh, what they're seeing as the needs in the community as well as to be that advocate. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. And you've certainly done a great job at doing that uh, yeah. as well. Um, I guess in closing here, is there anything anybody would like to, to say uh, to a potential board member to maybe either get them to take that next step to inquire about it? Um, yes, I would. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up um, is the team at Senior Connection Center under the leadership of um, Charlotte. She does such a great job and the whole team there is just above and beyond as far as professionalism. But also what I've really enjoyed watching is how you all care for each other. You support each other. Uh, you're always looking for ways to have a better workplace uh, for your employees. Um, you've won many awards. And so I think as a board member, that also um, makes you feel good that you're not only helping to serve the community, but you're working with an organization that, that serves their own very well. Well, thank you. And yeah. we, do, we do strive for that. So I appreciate your recognizing that and, and letting okay. potential board members know about that as well. Yeah, so kind of like Becky said, um, the Senior Connection Center has won awards as you know a great place to work. So I would say it's a great place to volunteer. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a pretty good way to wrap this up. So. Um, thank you, Becky, Georgiana, and Jalinda, for just sharing some of your insights uh, with our future board members. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. If you like what you heard and want to learn more about Senior Connection Center, please visit our website, seniorconnectioncenter.org. And if you think you have an interest in serving on our board and would like to schedule some time to talk with our president and CEO, please send an email to charlotte.mchenry at sccmail.org. Thanks for watching and for your interest in Senior Connection Center. We hope to hear from you soon.